we're welding up here, we're welding in the overhead. That's considered the 4GF. The main thing is that slag does like to fall. So I suggest you get your long sleeves on. You know, you want to tie up your buttons, um, maybe get some leathers, whatever it is you need. I've got two little run on and run off tabs and they're going to help me when I'm starting the arc. So if there's any sort of porosity or anything like that, it's going to get deposited on that plate. We don't have any stamps on our plate today because this is a practice plate. However, if it was a test day, the inspector would come and start stamping the square side or the 90 degree side. You get some markings on it, some coupon numbers, and the inspector will come and indicate where you're going to stop. So the, the stops are four and a half inches from one end or an inch and a half from the other. And we're going to do another stop, either an inch and a half or four and a half inches from that end. Two stops. We always start on the square side. Our weld must be no larger than five sixteenths of an inch and our leg lengths must not vary more than a 32nd. Make sure we clean our plate off well, uh, get rid of any rust or any, any heavy mill scale and stuff like that. We want to improve our chances. Just a reminder, if you're assembling your plate yourself, your tack should go on the back side and no larger than three quarters of an inch from the edge of the plate. Once that's done, you can clean up your, your tacks, clean the slag off, uh, clean the inside of your joint, and then start putting your runoff tabs on. Okay, as always, I'm using a low hydrogen 7018 electrode from the rod oven. I've got an eighth of an inch in diameter. The standard tells me that it has to be an eighth of an inch or greater we choose an eighth of an inch. Remember on every single pass you want to use a fresh rod, we'll burn these up afterwards. Two of the most important tools that I'm going to need are your chipping hammer and wire brush like always. And I have an angle grinder here and that's to hit it with it afterwards to get rid of any sort of residual. Remember we're not allowed any sort of metal removing tools, no abrasive discs or any sort of blades or or any saw blades, anything like that, okay? I got myself a pair of pliers just to sort of handle my, my plate. I've got a chisel and my hammer, and that's to remove any sort of spatter or any leftover slag. Talking about leftover slag, I've also got myself a nice pick here. And again, that is to get in there and remove any debris. Doesn't matter what you use. I'm using a, an old piece of tungsten here because it's harder than the mild steel itself. Let's keep in mind we need to protect ourselves here. I've got my long sleeves and my long pants. I'm dressed in my Canadian tuxedo, which is made of all cotton. I've got my beanie that's gonna protect my head and my ear from any sparks. Probably the most important thing here are my clear lenses, my safety glasses. Those are gonna protect my eyes from any sparks or chipping slag, anything like that. I've got my gloves, of course. And then last, I've got my Shade 10 helmet. And all this is good enough for me to get started. We'll be at about 115 and 125 amps. Again, we're welding with that 7018 electrode, one eighth right out of the oven. But I've got my plate up where it needs to be. I came in and I gave myself an extra little tack in here because this plate needs to stay fixed. We can't take this down now. The inspector will come and visit you to examine your stops. You can see that I've got something set up and this is really just to rest my arms on. So you really want to get comfortable. If you've got a heavy whip or a heavy stinger, you really want to be able to brace yourself with this. Some people like to freehand it. That's just not my style. I want to get as comfortable as I can. Here you can see me sticking a little bit. Thankfully, I did that on my runoff tab and it didn't become part of my weld. Once again, I'm welding along. I'm keeping a nice tight arc length here. I'm comfortable. I'm watching the toes of the weld and I'm watching that bead sort of climb up onto that square side. Remember, these are probably the most important welds of this whole joint. So we'll make sure that we've got proper technique. I've got a, you know, a 10 degree drag angle and I'm coming in at about half the included angle, which is about 45 degrees on that. Once I approach the end, like always, I break the arc quickly. Okay, at this point here, I'd call over the inspector. I'm gonna examine, make sure that my weld is no larger than 5 sixteenths, and that it's up against that square side. I'm gonna go ahead now and tie into that first stop on the square side. You can see me striking ahead a little bit, coming back to the crater, tracing it, 
and then moving back to my regular travel speed. This all happens pretty quick, so make sure we're using a fresh rod and we're prepared for this and we're nice and comfortable. Here you can see a finished product. I've got both my root passes in with the tie-ins and there's enough room in the middle for that center pass. All right, with those tie-ins done now, it's now time for me to do that third pass down the middle. I just got a bunch of arc blow on my last tie-in and it kind of threw me off a little bit. I think we're gonna be all right, but um, I'm gonna adjust a few things here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I move my ground and I relocated it to get a better, better work lead connection. The other thing I'm doing is I'm switching directions. So I was welding from this side in, now I'm gonna come from the inside out, right? Hoping that um, this will correct the arc blow. Once again, I'm lighting up on my runoff tab and I'm using that and then I'm coming into the weld. So we're gonna travel a little bit slower, so get comfortable here. This is a bit of a longer weld. We're gonna make sure that we marry all those uh, passes together and that backing bar and get it all into one. So because we're in the overhead position, we are susceptible of kind of increasing that arc length because your arm could drop or you know whatever the case may be. So just be mindful of that. Keep a nice tight arc length. Keep driving that rod up into that plate. The weld metal wants to stay up there, by the way. It wants to stay up into the heat. So watch the toes of the weld. And then once you get to the end, use that runoff tab again and break the arc. Here we have all three root passes complete and cleaned up. So now it's time to start filling. So I'm gonna work my way over from one side to another and you start on the square side. So a stringer bead on the square side and then you're gonna put one down the middle and then one up against that bevel side. And you're probably gonna do that one more time and then it'll be time to cap. Here's a good example where there's some spatter left over and if you weren't to remove that and just weld over it, slag will stay trapped in it. There's a bit of lack of fusion into the sidewall and that will show up as a pocket when you do a destructive test. So this is why it's very important to remove any of that spatter and get rid of any slag. So once I hit it with the chisel, I'm gonna come in here with my, you know, my pick, whatever, something sharp that you have and we're gonna remove any, any leftover debris in there. I've got that filled right up to the top almost. Got about a sixteenth and I'm ready to cap with four quick ones. Remember, we don't want a big bulky cap. We got to do a bunch of grinding afterwards to destructively test this. And the standard tells us that we got to be within an eighth of an inch. So let's keep that a little bit smaller. Okay, so with, uh, with my plate gathering a little bit of heat, I turned it down to about 117 now. The other option is to just really take a break, go grab a drink, let it cool a little bit, and then come back. Some people do that. This is just a personal choice. My machine's right there. I've got access to it, I can do that. So I'm putting in my first pass now of that cap, and just like we do in the flat, we're just overlapping them, keeping them nice and tight the whole time. Take the weight off this stinger. This being the first pass on my cap, I'm sort of biting that edge of that plate, just enough to say that I'm covering it and that I don't have any underfill or any undercut and I'm traveling along. We wanna keep this one nice and straight because this one's gonna be the base for the rest of the, the welds. They're all gonna sort of work off this one.
And then cosmetically, there's a few areas, you know, that not, not perfect. With the plate cooled off enough so that we can handle it. This cap here, there is a few areas, I would say, that have a bit of undercut, you know, but I would say it's within tolerance. I like it when this stuff happens because this is where we can learn and we can, we can have a look and see and we can correct these mistakes, right?